hello everyone welcome back to my channel i'm just popping in really quickly here to film the intro for this video which is um episode two of my van life diaries in this interview i'm interviewing a new friend called anna and i just met her last week and i just wanted to pop over and see her van set up and ask her a few questions about her experience the reason i started this series van life story series is because i just all around me van life community is getting more prominent in my life and i just find it really interesting and i think it's really inspiring when someone takes it upon themselves whether it's their choice or not to be more sustainable and to have more freedom in their life not having to pay rent and being able to go wherever you want seems very appealing so if you're interested in learning more about van life keep watching hello hello what's your name my name's anna and this is where you live this is my home yep it's very nice thank you this is a ford e450 starcraft i have been kind of on and off in between traveling and then here for the past three years five years ago when i met my partner orion we lived in a van together in arizona at a really awesome small liberal arts outdoor school called Preston college and pretty much everybody lived in their vehicles there. Well, there was like a huge community there that lived in their vehicles. And so we were introduced to van life there and a lot of their focus was on adventure education. And so with that, a lot of the courses were outside. So they, wow. one of their sayings is they have more vans than classrooms because a lot of their classes are like in the field. Wow. They really instill like this very Jack Kerouac esque or like Edward Abbey. It's like kind of what they're trying to <laughs> produce. So that's why so many people like live in their vehicles. They're going after that nomadic What's lifestyle. Your, what was your major? Environmental science and education. That makes sense. Education. That makes yeah. sense. <laughs> but a lot of my friends also study. They have a huge social justice scene there, which is really amazing. But I think huh. that's also an aspect. A lot of people that are in the social justice aspect are kind of just like we don't want to pay rent like you know fuck definitely man. so it's kind of it's a nice win-win of having a small space being able to go mm. anywhere and mm. park anywhere and sleep anywhere and also not paying rent Obi and, and Ben sleep in this one and then Orion and I sleep in the vehicle That's parked the out front our fridge here um this rolls out on hinges nice um That's so nice. fridge space oven we had thanksgiving dinner in here wow. uh, two thanksgivings ago which was so fun how many people were in here like 12. wow yeah. <laughs> we didn't have a turkey though okay. that would not have been here yeah that's okay <laughs> i could hold the i could hold on the turkey <laughs> and then four burner stove like very messy food storage sink utensils things like that and this opens yes. nice they do um Wow. I so miss having windows. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that is, I mean, that I think is one of the reasons why it feels so cozy in here. But when we're on road trips, we'll take these down, which is really fun. Mm. How is it like living here versus being in Arizona there yeah. where you started? So different. I mean, my backyard in Arizona was like anywhere we parked, it could be on a mountain, you know, by a river a lot of nature here we're in downtown mission right now walk outside and there's a pile of trash and a lone tree <laughs> yeah. so uh, sacrificing the nature for access to like the things the city provides like the jobs that we have here the incomes that we have here the ability to save up and travel like that's what we all did we all quit our jobs last april after saving up and traveled for a year and a half. I went to Asia for the most part um, and around all around the states we took the bus on a road trip all around the states climbing to all the national parks which was really amazing. I really love Idaho. I mean interesting definitely not for the people no offense Idaho is, <laughs> but for the landscape. Yeah. It's really really gorgeous. A year later after graduating we moved out here and bought this bus with two of Orion's like childhood friends and renovated it all together and been living in it ever since. 
there's actually a lot of layers of challenges. There's the cleanliness aspect has been a thing just because historically I have, I mean, I still really enjoy living in a clean space, but when you decide to live with three men, not well, I mean, it doesn't matter if they're men or women, but three people in such a small space, like inevitably it's going to get cluttered and messy really easily. Mm -hmm. But on the bright side, it does get clean very easily. You just have to put your mind to it, which can be hard to motivate everybody. Like, let's clean for 10 mm -hmm. minutes. That has been kind of hard. Mm -hmm. Just kind of getting used to sometimes it's going to be messy and just having to accept that living with three men has been actually There have been a lot of really amazing things about it. Just yeah. them as people, but also Not living with women has been hard just because I have lived with women my whole life But I love them like I didn't really know them before I moved into the bus. It's a great way to build friendships. You get to know people really, really well when you live in such a small space with mm -hmm. them. It's like a slumber party every single night. <laughs> we become like closer than than friends. Mm. It's like we're one big family now. So That's sweet. I've never really been one that really needs that much personal space. I've yeah. always lived with people my entire life and loved it. I think the fact of just like being a woman, besides just the lack of connecting with other women, at least in this space, I have just had to pretty much have no filters like I think having open honest communication about everything that's going on like they've learned so much just in general from just living with me they'll know they know where I'm at every day we have to have open communication in order for this to work mm. biologically like they know you know what time of the month mm -hmm. it is how is it without having like running water I guess Special shout out to Diva Cups and thanks. That's been amazing. So nice. that hasn't really been an issue at all just because like I'll do that and then sleep all night and then in the morning I have the gym right outside nice. which has, you know, my bathroom, my shower, towels and soap and everything. So that hasn't been an issue at all. The education has been really cool, what the boys have learned. Have you learned anything from them? A lot of technical skills with just mm. like mechanics and building things since Ben is an architect. A lot of hands-on skills, they've definitely empowered me in a lot of ways. For building, for example, if I didn't know how to do something and I was getting like emotional about it mm -hmm. just because I felt like incompetent in comparison mm -hmm. to them with building and creating, they handled that so well and like would teach me and then like challenge me, mm -hmm. like they're always challenging me, I which love I really that. love. So. Yeah. How long did it take you to build this one? Yeah, we did two separate builds. Um, when we first got it, it had, you know, seats and everything looked like a normal bus. Took it apart and that first renovation was 14 days altogether. And what it looked like was we had the ceiling painting, which Toby did. Love it, it's so nice. Yeah, it's really amazing, we love this. And then it had the walls, which is quarter inch plywood. And then besides that, it was just hanging beds. So the beds were on, there we go, <laughs> camouflage. The beds were on ropes. So each corner was on a rope tied to a prusik, which was a type of climbing hitch. Um, cool. And so that made the beds levelable because you could never find a level place to park. <laughs> Hilly San Very Francisco. True. And so we had three beds total in the bus. One twin bed here, one twin bed here for Toby, and then a big bed back here for me and Orion. That cool. was it. No running water, no solar, no lights, no stove. And that was a lot. It mm. was really hard. So we did that for a year, and then raised enough money to convert it again, adding the floors, adding these beds, these couches that turn into beds. This design, these are called rock and roll hinges and you we okay. found them in the VW conversion design that Toby's mom has and that's kind of what inspired us to do it like this and so right now couch mode pull it up we have storage underneath we have board games climbing gear solar Love stuff it. camping stuff all that jazz and it folds into a bed little we'll insert pieces that go here Good night. <laughs> Just Good night. kidding. Adding four burner stove, oven, fridge, so nice. 
running water, kitchen, storage. Wow. Yeah. So nice. It's like Definitely a, a new space now. <laughs> so you this, took the took first about, time. Oh, the first one took 14 days. The second one took about three months of all four of us, you know, cranking it out and working 12 hour days every single day. Toby grew up in Sacramento, so we did it at a, we converted the vehicles at Toby's mom's house since she has a garage and tools and open arms. It's really interesting speaking to with people who don't really know me and they ask, you know, where do you live? And I'm like, oh, I live in, I live in a bus in the mission. And they immediately are like, oh, like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You know, they don't really Definitely. understand that this is a choice. I mean, we are so, so privileged. We had family supporting us, a place to rent this out, hmm. the money to do this and make it what it is. And yeah, I mean, our neighbors just looking around, walking around, like we see the huge housing crisis, homeless crisis that is here. And it is really sad and very eye-opening. Reminds me every day how, you know, privileged we are. And the community that has come out from it, or mm. come from it, is really amazing. Um, Toby, Ben, and Orion all speak fluent Spanish, and so we've gotten to know a lot of our Spanish-speaking neighbors mm -hmm. who live in their RV. Olga, with her, like, three kids who are from Mexico, who live in an RV near here. Uh, Toby met her, and we are planning on helping them with solar, because um, she doesn't nice. know how to do solar. So, that, we have a friend, Tasha and Eric, who uh, live in a big school bus and park around here. We have just, like, we've been able to meet so many people that live in their vehicles and like it has become a community of people who are making the decision to do it like us and then people who are kind of forced into that situation and that's why there are people trying to make the triage center you know we are trying to unite and support each other look out for each other so that has been really cool because it does make it a lot easier living in a vehicle in a mission knowing you're not alone Definitely. and like knowing your neighbors we did have one police encounter, and this is where the aspect of privilege comes back in. We were, all four of us were in here, and Toby and Orion were leaving for work. I mean, you just gotta picture us, all four Chilling. white people with <laughs> Patagonia clothing on, and like, we had like a Patagonia backpack, we looked like a, I don't even know, ridiculous coming out of a bus in the mission. And so Toby walks out with his bike and his backpack, and as he's walking out of the doors, there's a police officer and he's walking right by and he kind of does like a double take and looks at Toby and Toby's like, Ooh, like pretends he doesn't see him, locks the door and like kind of starts walking the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And the officer goes, Hey, you, did you just come out of that vehicle? And Toby's like, yeah, I did. And the officer is like, you know, questioning him very like aggressive. And Toby was able to change the conversation. And I don't know how much of it had to do with the officer himself and Toby and how he, you know, guided that conversation. I'm sure most of it had to do with the fact um, that Toby is white and he was able to guide the conversation and relate how Toby's little brother went to the same college as the officer in Connecticut. Wow. Oh, okay, and, there it goes. Like, flex that. Literally. Flex that muscle. Just, like, they're starting to, like, relate, and the guy mm. all of a sudden just, like, flipped a switch of, like, you know, realizing what we weren't forcing, or, or we weren't forced into the situation of living in here. Like, I think a lot of the other people that live in vehicles. So he That's ended up being like, oh, I lived in my tent in Santa Cruz. Like, all they left being friends, practically. That's I mean, not really, but just, like, you know it went from being aggressive, like, what are you doing, to like, oh, okay. Wow, so let's hang out this only, Saturday. Yeah, right, so, my <laughs> privilege. That's in interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is the only really situation we've had with cops. I mean, being in the mission, we do have a lot of people who are homeless, who a lot of people are, have mental issues and drug issues. Had people, or a guy who was on something I think and this was when the vehicle this vehicle had just the hanging beds and Orion and I were sleeping at that bed mm. that was over there and our feet were at the back door and in the middle of the night 
I guess we had forgotten to lock the door. Oh no. I know. And in the middle of the night, no, the no. door opens. Oh no, no. And I'm the only one that wakes up. And I sit up and there's just this man and he's like holding the doors and he's like, la, 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 you know, oh, wow. and I'm the That's only one that scary. wakes up out of all the boys. And I'm like, hey, ah. Yeah. And then, Arg! <laughs> I know, I'm like half asleep. <laughs> um, and Orion like sits up and grabs the doors and is able to close it. I mean, I think he honestly just saw the handle and was like, oh. Yeah, let's try it. And it happened open. <laughs> I know. It definitely wasn't. I'm sure he was <laughs> Just as surprised. <laughs> in situations like that, then it's like all of a sudden you realize like, oh my God, I'm parked in a tin can on the street in the mission. It's really easy to come into this space and like turn on the lights, close the doors, window covers, and just completely escape. I love the garden, the windowsill garden up here. This is where me and Orion sleep. Um, this build, Orion, Toby, and Ben did. I didn't really have much to do with this build just because I was working a lot. So we have the bed here, which is, right now the electrical is not working, which is a shame for this video, but it is on hydraulic lifts, so you can press the buttons and they level. The back door, this pallet wall, mm -hmm. it's really fun. Because it goes open. Yeah, it is on electric winches on the top, so you can press some buttons. Also, the electric's not working right now, but... Why isn't it working? Folds, I don't really know. That okay. is a good question. <laughs> it folds down into a back deck, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Picnic, like, yeah. open view to the ocean. Yes. So nice. The possibilities the are endless. Um, don't really do that ever in the mission, just because <laughs> trying to be incognito. Fridge and freezer space empty since we mostly cook in the other one mm -hmm. so the other one is your living living room kitchen hangout space stove this is actually a super powerful stove we actually kind of regret getting this one we <laughs> turned it on it's too powerful it's too powerful it doesn't you can't like simmer anything we turned it on and actually caught our our backsplash oh, on fire shit. that is not something you want not something to happen you want. In no. your <laughs> a lot of the things are second hand that we got from a place called RV Dr. George in Sacramento. Shout out. Yeah, they have pretty much just a whole space full of RV parts so nice. that you get to pick and choose to help renovate a space. Yeah, I really do miss yards, a big kind of space where I can like dance and explode things and have it stay there in an organized way. If you're working on an art project or even like cooking, if I want to like ferment something and bake bread, like it's kind of mm -hmm. hard to do it in this space. It's definitely possible. It's a, I definitely do miss like a big, bigger space. Huh. Yoga, like mm -hmm. I have done not too much yoga in this one because we haven't been on a lot of road trips, but in that one, we've done like a lot of yoga on the roof. Um, we have a little oh. rooftop deck, but since we have the gym, that's where I pretty much do all my physical activity. This is pretty much just a space for sleeping. At bathrooms, do miss having myself a toilet. In the middle of the night. Yeah. What do you do if the gym's closed? I use a pee bottle, which oh. most people that live in their vehicles know what that is. Just a bottle that you it's pee in. Just a bottle that you pee in. That's like, for a woman. Not like, this one, do you have like, like one of those funnels? A shiwi. Yeah. I don't have a she-we. <laughs> I use an algae. For the most part, I mean, I've gotten really good at it. Nice. It's a lot of practice. When I first started using a pee bottle like five years ago <laughs> with Orion in the van, like it was fine because it was like just me and him. Mm -hmm. And then I moved into a vehicle with his two best friends who I didn't really know and had to use a pee bottle. Ever since, because I pee in the middle of the night, every single night. Yeah. Um, and so that was a huge curve just because there's the aspect of privacy that is gone. And so what I did was I would wait until the middle of the night, wait for them to all be asleep, except for Orion, and I would literally crawl behind the bed so I could like maybe feel not 10 feet away from Toby and sleeping Ben, squat down onto my pee bottle and hold Orion's hand, and he would literally just have to go or like- Why are you holding his hand? <laughs> And now it is hilarious how much that is. I mean, that changed so fast because mm -hmm. like, that was way too much work to mm -hmm. have to do every, that every night. night. So now it's 
were all, it's, I, mean, I don't know if this is TMI. Do they also have pee bottles? Yep, they have okay, pee bottles. Um, yeah, but now we're all very, very comfortable with each other. So all kind of respect each other's. I'm like, okay, I'm peeing. Like mm -hmm. everybody just looks away and continues their conversation over there. Guests, nice. it's always nice having guests. I mean, whether it's sleeping pad on the floor or like rearranging where everybody sleeps, like nobody really has a set bed. Kind of the mindset is like, I own a quarter of the bus. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a specific quarter. So kind of everybody has that sense of like sharing and. I love that. Cool. Do you feel like more people should live in vehicles? I mean, I think if you want to try it out, you definitely should. I think. The aspect of it being in a vehicle, I think, is less important. The big takeaway is the lack of stuff, just because I think that is a huge problem. Capitalism and yeah. consumerism, people being very materialistic, and so living in a small space forces you to go to the bare bones of what you really need. Yeah. The big takeaway is uh, I don't really ever want to pay rent. If I am going to live in a space, I want to own it. It's, it's just a changing world. It's, the community is ever growing. It's huge now, which is amazing. I mean, I get to meet so many really cool people all the time who are living in their vehicle, get to share that with them. But also the lack of space is a real thing. Like three years ago when we were parking in the same spot, we were one of the only, well, there were like maybe a few other vans and a couple RVs. Now it's like, insane. Having multiple people really helps. Since there are four of us, we will have people go on bikes and walk around, look for parking oh, spots, so and then nice. call people who are in the driving and be like, I found one, it's on 19th and Harrison. Like, I love it. Come stat, and then we'll stand in the parking spot and be those assholes. I and like, <laughs> you parking it on coming traffic. Do you feel like you'll ever move back into a traditional I think so. I think home. I will eventually, at once, like, I want to settle down and like have a family. Sure. Um, I mean, I could see myself having like maybe a baby in here, like yeah. a toddler, wow. but but I mean, I would love to have a house one day and like space and a yard and a dog. I've always wanted a dog. And yeah. We don't want to bring a dog really into this space just because it's not very fair. <laughs> Do you have any advice of someone who is considering this, like one piece of advice that you would tell them? Reach out for for help to anyone. I mean is a really welcoming community for the most part and there are so many resources and you don't have to really do this alone whether you're going on Facebook and looking for groups or even like Craigslist people are willing to help which is really cool yeah <laughs> love it thanks Anna yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one bye